Welcome back, 3D SSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics, and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3D SSPP software developed at the University of Michigan. In this video, I am going to be talking about seated analysis in the 3D SSPP. In the 3D SSPP, the main difference between standing and seated is how the body is supported and kept in balance. In standing mode, the program assumes that the body mass as well as any external loads on the body are only supported by forces coming into the feet from the floor. When seated, however, the body can be supported by forces from the seat and possibly a backrest as well as from the feet. So the balance calculations have to be different for the seated situation. I'll start a seated analysis by first entering a seated posture and then by setting the program support mode to seated. By the way, standing support mode is the program default. To easily enter a seated posture, you can use the preset posture command. In order to select a seated posture, first you're going to navigate up to the task input drop down menu and move your cursor down until you get to the preset postures section of this drop down menu. Now that we have a seated posture, let's turn on the program seated posture analysis mode by using the support selection menu dialog screen. To get to this, you'll go once again to the Task Input drop-down menu and select the Support Selection option. Note that this menu will give you a number of body support options that you can alter and control. Whether standing or seated, you can use the upper left feet support buttons to tell the program what foot support is being used to support the body. Note that in standing mode, you cannot select No Foot Support. Further to the right, you can select Seated Support. In the seated case, you can see that you either can select both feet supported or no foot supported within the feet support area of this menu. No foot support would be if you are seated on a stool and do not have a footrest. In seated mode, you can see that you have the option of enabling a backrest for the seat via a checkbox and additionally you can enter a customizable backrest center height above the seat. Here you can enter the height of the center of the backrest via this dialog box. One note here is that the units are going to depend on the units mode that you have currently enabled, which would be English or metric. If I click apply here, we'll see that our avatar is now seated on a seat that also has a seat back, uh, and that is showing up in our hominoid view. Note also that the center of the coordinate system used for the location measurements defaults to the back of the seat for seated analyses. Additionally, if you look over at the status window, you'll see that our typical display for standing postures has changed somewhat. In the balance area of the status window, you'll see that there is a new graphical representation of our current balance setup that now reflects balance in a seated posture. While it may look different to the balance display you see with standing postures, it works largely in the same way. Acceptable balance is inside the yellow boundary. Critical balance is on the yellow boundary. And unacceptable balance is outside of the yellow boundary. Note that there is no boundary behind the pelvis. A seat backrest will keep the worker from falling backward, so the program doesn't recognize a back boundary. If there is no backrest, then the ischial tuberosities of the pelvis, which in this graphic are shown as black dots, is the rearward limit. The ischial tuberosities are the bony bumps where the estimated seat support forces enter the body. When it comes to the joint forces report, there is also a small but important change to note when conducting analyses in a seated posture. If I navigate to the Joint Forces Report and open the report, you'll notice that now we may see values for the forward seat edge, ischial tuberosity, and backrest along with the toes. These are the locations where support forces may now enter the body. The amount of each force depends upon the settings and the body posture. A couple more items to note about the Forces Report for seated postures would be that the forward seat edge will only have values if the feet are not supported. In that case, the forward edge of the seat will need to support the weight of the lower legs and feet. Finally, the backrest will only have a value if the worker is leaning back or if external forces are pushing the torso backwards. So let's adjust our avatar's posture so that you can see some of the situations that only a seated analysis will produce. 
If I alter my side view posture to make it look like my avatar is, say, sitting in a car seat, so slightly leaned back, you'll start to see that in the joint forces report I'm now getting values in the Y and Z directions in the backrest row that are going to indicate support provided by the backrest. If you also look to the rows of this report that shows the forces acting on the feet, you'll notice that those are lessening in value as the backrest and ischial tuberosities are taking a larger share of the loads being applied to the body. As you lean your seated avatar back into a position that more resembles someone sitting in a recliner, you'll see that the backrest is supporting more and more of the loads being applied to the body. These types of postures are ones you won't likely run into very often, but it's good to know that the 3D SSPP has the capability to analyze seated work tasks should you need to do that. That's all for this tutorial on balance in the 3D SSPP. Check out further videos in this 3D SSPP tutorial series to learn more about how the software can help you analyze physical demands in the workplace. Thanks for watching.